missionary stories. This is so exciting because we have a story, a miracle for Samuelito from Mexico. This is an exciting lesson because this little boy was nine years old and had never heard the word of God. Never heard the word. And that's why we know that there's many in this city that has never heard. We are giving out our New Testaments and we are praising the Lord for these and how God has brought forth fruit and been glorified. This is something that every person that is a child of God can help in passing these out and getting the Word of God. It has the right page for you to turn to. It has how to be saved. And it teaches you the Word in a way that is exciting and has what you need, even questions as you turn to the back. You need to see yourself as a lost sinner, separated from God and condemned to an eternal hell. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God and your sins have hid his face from you. Isaiah 59 2. And it has all of these things that you need to know. And this is, you can carry it in your purse. You can read it wherever you go. And you must begin with the book of John. And the book of John only has 21 chapters. And we're excited about this. Our goal is 100,000. We've already given out over 14,000. Now that is unreal because we have given these out also 14,000. It's over 14 for each one. So we're just praising the Lord for what he is doing. And we are living completely by faith. And this is the only way that you can please the Lord is by faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So this little word, this book teaches us the dark page stands for sin. We're going to learn more about that in these next few weeks. The red page is the blood of Jesus Christ. The white page, a cleansed heart. And the gold page stands for heaven. So we're going to learn about the green page today. So we saw the blind man in the book of John chapter 9. And we're going to be reading from there. Last week we saw how the Pharisees, how the blind man in Samuelito's life told him this was not true. The Pharisees are doing the same thing with this man that believed God, was obedient, and could see. And then there were divisions among them. They say unto the blind man again how he his eyes were opened, and they said he was a prophet. But they sent to his parents and asked his parents. And he, they said, he is of age, ask him. So then again they called the man that was blind and said unto him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. They're talking about Christ. They called him this man. He answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, but now I see. How he opened mine eyes, that's all that mattered, is that his eyes were opened. He answered them, he says, I have told you already and you did not hear. Wherefore, would you hear it again? Will you also be his disciples? And then they reviled him, they became angry. He says, we know that God spoke unto Moses, but as for this 
fella talking about Christ, we know not from where he came. And then he said to them, Why in? This is a marvelous thing that he hath done. Now listen, all of you people that are not truly a child of God today. Now you have to be a child of God before God hears your prayers. Verse 31 of chapter 9. I want you to learn these lessons that we're teaching about the blind man. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of God, God hears him. Since the world began, has it not been, has any man opened the eyes of one that was blind? If this man were not of God, he could do nothing. John 15, 5 is my favorite verse. I am the vine, ye are the branches. If ye abide in me, and I abide in you, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Do you have pride because you can do something better than someone else? Remember, you could not do anything unless it comes from God. Remember John 15:5. Without me, ye can do nothing. That puts all pride from anything that lifts you up. Because God's word says, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. This is God's way. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we're so thankful that we can call Thee Father. We're thankful we can come before the very throne of grace to find help in time of need. For every true believer that's watching today, we're asking that Thou will decrease each of us in our lives, in our ministry, that Thou will increase more and more and give us the mind of Christ the unity, the one mind and one accord that thou dost command us to have as true believers, that there will not be any sin in our lives that would hinder answer to prayer or to keep a soul from being saved. Keep our mouths from evil and our bodies from all iniquity. Let no sin reign in our bodies. Thank thee for hearing and answering our prayers. In Christ's name I pray, amen. So we saw how this little boy heard the word of God for the first time. And we saw how the blind man was sitting there and told him not to take the book. And he knew in his heart that this lady was telling the truth. She had a smile. You should always have a smile. You should always. The joy of the Lord is your strength. A merry heart doeth good like medicine. So if you're down and out today, look up at Christ and see what he's done for you. You see, this little boy found out that the only way that he could get from earth to, he to heaven is through the blood of Jesus Christ, the cross. Jesus had to die on the cross. He had to shed his blood. His life that he lived on the earth was perfect. He was perfect man and he was truly God. That's why he never sinned, that he could die for our sins. And if you don't know that today, you cannot have joy and peace and love. So we saw how he was afraid to tell his father and his mother. So him and his sister went out to look for lizards. They caught two each. Now they take these lizards and put the rope around their necks stand by the side of the road and show the people that they are for sale. Now, how many jobs does this little boy have? Isn't this exciting? He is a shoeshine boy. He is selling lizards and he helps his father go to sell the pigs. How many jobs do you have? 
He's only nine years old and he's working so he can go to school. I pray that as you hear these lessons that are true, that you will be more thankful, that you will be out giving out these New Testaments this summer. All you have to do is write to the box number. We mail them to you. And we're thankful that this is the way to reach your neighborhoods. And we must reach the neighborhoods because your neighborhood will be safer and you can enjoy life even greater as your neighbors come to know Christ as Savior. Pray for your neighbors and pray for this city. So this little boy, as they were selling these, they saw a car go by. And as the car went by, they, he saw some lady waving and he didn't recognize who she was. And then they, they stopped the car and the little, his little sister ran over to the car thinking they wanted to buy the lizards. And he said, we get money for the lizards and the people have a good meal. You see how important it is to think about others? He was thinking of what this would do for them even. That's how we're to be. Everything we do, we're to think of others. We should never be selfish and want everything for ourselves. So, as they, the lady came over, it was the lady that had taught him the wordless book. And she came and she started going through the book and telling him. And as she told him this book, this second time, once again, their eyes got so big and their mouth flew wide open because every time you tell this story about the wordless book, God reveals something new to you. And this is one of the things that did so much was darkness. Nobody wants to be in darkness. But you see, God's word says that in 1 Peter 2, verse 9, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness and to his marvelous light. And then while we're here, we go to Jude. Now let me ask you, are you still in darkness? Are you still a child of the devil? Here's what God's word says in Jude. And Jude is only 25 verses. And he says that this is reserved the blackness of darkness forever for those that do not receive Christ. And you will never see light. This was the most thing that touched these children more than anything is because they had never heard that we are children of the devil. And also in Ephesians, it teaches us this, and you which he hath quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, where and in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, that's the darkness in the world, that is Satan, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. And you know that in Acts 26, 18, this is the darkness. But Paul said he had been called to open their eyes, to open their eyes, and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God. That's what you're doing when you're giving out God's word. So this was absolutely amazing to these children once again. And then she handed him the book this time because there was no one to hinder. He told every color. He only heard this message twice.
The dark page stands for sin in our lives, and that's the kingdom of darkness. The red page stands for the blood of Christ. The white page stands for a clean heart, righteousness. And the gold page stands for heaven. And he was so excited. And she said, the green page stands for growing. This is what you are to do after you become a child of God. You must grow. 2 Peter 3.18 Grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You don't want to stay a baby all of your life. A baby Christian is a carnal Christian. A baby Christian is one that complains and is never satisfied. But once you grow up in the Lord, you are content in all things. There is a difference. So, he knew now he had to tell his mother and his father because his little sister would tell. So they went home, they put their money in his school crock. And this was exciting. And they let all the people, all the family members know where this money was. Because you do not steal from those of your family. But it's all right to steal from other people if you don't get caught, they thought. But if you love someone, you won't steal from them. If you love someone, you will tell them about Christ. So... After his little sister went to bed, remember his father has gone for the night and the day to sell pigs. And then she said, Son, tell me what you have been doing, who you have been listening to, and who is this lady? Little sister said, You have been listening to her at the bus stop. And you heard her today. And she was angry and she was yelling at him. She started throwing her arms up. It was, she just became so angry. This is bad. You should not listen. Wait till your father comes home. He will punish you. And he might say that you are not fit to go to school and that we will not have a school crop for you. So he quieted her down. She cried, screamed, and screamed. The little sister was awakened out of her sleep. And then he said to her, Mother, let me tell you. I wanted to tell you last night, but you wanted us to go to bed early so we had, because we had to get up early. But he said, let me tell you what this lady has told me. He told her everything he could remember. But one of the things that he remembered was that he could become a child of God by believing. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. He remembered that I can become a child of God and I'm going to heaven. I would be able to go to heaven. And he told her everything that he had remembered about this little book. And she said to him, you must never listen to this lady again. Oh, he knew he had to listen to this lady. And then he said, mother, I believe he was going to say that he wanted to accept Christ as savior. But he couldn't say it because she was too angry. And then, all of a sudden, when she came in and told him that he must never listen to this lady again, and if you don't ever listen to her again, I will not tell your father. Oh, how tempting this was. You see, boys and girls, as soon as you want to do what's right, there is always someone that's trying to keep you from coming to Christ. Don't listen to them. But you know what he said? He thought in his heart, I know that I can think about what 
this lady has told me, and no one will ever know my thoughts. I know that what she says is true. You see, boys and girls, that's why this book is so important. You can read this, turn from page to page. You can give this out, and you can see a difference in someone's life. So as this blind man that we've been reading about, now let me just go through this. This is exciting. The blind man was known to God. Now listen, you must understand this. It was permitted by him in all his all-wise purpose. It was thus allowed by God so that his own glory through this miracle of mercy and power might be demonstrated that the works of God should be manifested in him. Now, I want you to listen to these truths of this blind man and every person that is listening that is being persecuted by another person, just like this little boy. First, it was the blind man, and then it was his mother. You must hear these truths of the blind man. You see, the Pharisees were the same way. Now listen, a double work was wrought, then manifest in this man. A double work. It was miraculously a cured, and then, after the cure, another work of God was worked when he believed on the Son of God. A double miracle. This was wrought so that God would be manifested. Now, I know that every person that's listening is suffering from trials that seem to be almost too unbearable. But listen at this true story of this blind man and this little boy, and you will not complain. You will believe that this is the works of God, and you must live what he says. The work of God is to believe on him whom he hath sent. John 6, 29. Faith in him is the work of God. Faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Faith is just believing what God says he will do. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. The object of faith. Faith has to have a foundation, and that foundation is the Word of God. You cannot be saved apart from the Word of God. So this, God permits this to happen and allows it to exist for his own glory. Every person that's listening today, we have trials with our children, with our grandchildren. We have trials with people that say they are true believers, but are a hindrance to the Word of God, to keep you from giving out the Word of God. You see, you see this with unbelievers, but it also happens with those that profess to be Christians. So you see, we have to be obedient to God's Word for people to see Christ manifested in our lives. The man was thus ordained to be blind so that the works of God might be made manifest. That's what your trials are doing right now. 
the Lord sent him to the pool of Siloam. And now this is so important that you got to hear these truths. He went and on his way and washed and came sin. It was a test of faith and obedience. One thing I know were as I was blind, but now I see. He fell at Christ's feet to worship. The great change came about in his life by the operation of the Spirit of God. This is a testimony of every true believer that has accepted Christ as Savior. So he declares that it will, would be impossible that he who opened his eyes was a sinner. That's what they called him. Remember, they even called Jesus a sinner. So what are they going to call you? <laughs> Much worse. For God would not hear a sinner. Now, you know that. You cannot pray to God until you become a child of God. But if God acknowledges a man and manifests his prayer through him, he must be a true worshiper of God and be obedient to him. What did they do? They cast him out of the temple. But in doing this, they only cast him into the arms of the Lord Jesus Christ. Has someone cast you out, rejected you, and despised you? This, listen, he, Christ was not even bodily present when they cast him out of the temple. He had heard every word because he is omniscient. But Christ found him. Those who, for the sake of the truth and confession of Christ, suffer anything and are insulted, these are especially honored. If you have been cast out by another person, Christ honors you, and you are going to be blessed by him. Don't hate the person that hurts you. Don't hate those. Christ didn't hate them. This blind man was cast out because they didn't believe that Christ had healed him. The Jews cast him out of the temple, and the Lord of the temple found him. He was dishonored by those who dishonor Christ and was honored by the Lord Jesus Christ. If people are hurting you today as a true believer, Christ will find you and you will become a praise and honor and glory to him. Don't look at people today. Look to Christ. Once you hear these lessons, you're going to find out with Samuel Leto what happened to his father. And when he comes home, oh, you are going to be so thrilled how God overrules when we believe his word. Thank you for tuning in. Hope you tune in next week and that your life has changed and that you are wanting to serve him. Every day.